Cameron Mattingly. I work for the Coca-Cola Company. My name is Rob Hill, and I am a leasing specialist with the State Properties Commission of Georgia. My name is Lisa Prodigo Nimerowitz. I am the Instructional Technology Coordinator at the Howard School in Atlanta. My name is Amir Baraka. I'm an author, filmmaker, and I'm a producer. Hello, my name is Mark O'Connor. I'm the Chief Business Officer at Curant Health. Hi, my name is Catherine Sellers, and I am a second grade teacher at the Skink School. And I was diagnosed with dyslexia in the third grade. I found out that I was dyslexic when I was in the fifth grade. I was officially diagnosed with dyslexia when I was in third grade. I was diagnosed with dyslexia while serving time in prison. I wasn't even diagnosed until well into adulthood, and the only reason that I was was that my son, who was in the third grade, was diagnosed with dyslexia as well. And when his doctor was explaining it to us and some of the, the, the key symptoms, I said, well, wait, I do that, and I do that, just like my son. And the doctor said, well, that's because you have dyslexia. And it was like a bolt of lightning hit me. I never really understood why some things were tougher for me than, than others, and it all became clear. When I was in first grade, someone, um, of authority sat my parents down and told them that I'm just going to be a C student for the rest of my life and that they needed to learn to accept that about me. If I was talking to a dyslexic child, I would tell them, your brain's a powerful tool. Embrace every one of the strengths that you know you have. Granted, there's some things that are hard for us to do, but I know that it's the cognitive difference of my brain. That means the way that I think and the way I process things, the way I problem solve, the way I create. It's that difference that has led to my successes as I lead global business and I have for the last 24 years for one of the largest companies in the world. The words that I have for everyone in five that is out there, don't allow yourself to become like me. I allow dyslexia to rob me of many precious years of my life. You see, I never dreamed about becoming a basketball player, football player, uh, dentist, any of that, because I was so embarrassed due to the fact that I couldn't read until I hated school and I stayed away from school. But when I woke up and I realized that I was a gift, that I had talents, that I was smart, that I could be somebody, my life skyrocketed. But I wasted so many years. I don't want you to waste those precious years, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, ninth, tenth grade. No, don't waste those years. I found that my dyslexia gives me a different perspective that's valuable to people. My message to students with dyslexia would be to never give up and to follow your dreams. You can be anything you want to be. Embrace who you are. You're one in five, you're special, but you have to believe it here. You have to believe it. Don't allow it to handicap you. Don't allow it to put you uh, uh, in a closet. Don't, don't be ashamed like I was. If you have loving parents, embrace what they're saying. You're a gift to your parents. You're a gift to your community. You're a gift to your school. You're a gift to me because when I see you, I see all the potential that was in me that I wasted because I was ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You're a gift to the world. But listen, dyslexia is not a disease. It, it doesn't mean that we are not smart. It's just that our minds think a little bit differently than others. And in fact, some of the most intelligent, the most well-known and creative people in the world are dyslexics. From Albert Einstein to George Washington to Leonardo da Vinci, Richard Branson, Steve Jobs, Muhammad Ali, and even Tim Tebow. So I look at my dyslexia as an absolute gift. Uh, it has made me the business success that I am. Um, our brains have to work a little harder, and that gives us an unfair advantage when we get a little older. We know how to think, and it makes us fabulous at what we job and uh, what we do, and really expands how creative we are and how strong we can be um, in the future. So never look at dyslexia as anything but a gift, because it was a gift for me. I have so much more potential than what people, what's on paper and what people think that I can do. And I want every child to have that. Every child to feel like they can, you know, reach the stars because they can. 
and um, especially if they have a dyslexic mind and they can see this beautiful world that no one else can see. I'd like you to remember one other thing. Life isn't like school. That's a good thing because you'll be able to shine. So keep at it. Today I want you to get up wherever you are, go into the bathroom, go into the wherever and look in the mirror and say to yourself, I am a gift to the world. I am precious. I am beloved. I am a conqueror. You have to say these things no matter what your condition is. I don't see you as you are right now. I see who you will become. I see who you will become. You must see who you will become. Don't give up. Never, 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 never give up. I am hashtag one in five. I am one in five. Um, I am one in five of people that have dyslexia. I love you. I thank you. One in five.